and welcome back to another lab okay in this one we're going to do network address translation and what we're going to do is set up a pool on HQ and translate from VLAN 10 out and we'll ping 110 over here have a sniffer in line so it's going to be picking up all the traffic that's flowing in via this link so we should see our ICMP come in and whether it's being translated or not so to give you an example of what we should see if we do a ping 192.168.110.10 first one should time out as it does the up resolution and then we get through so we'll look at the sniffer expand this out a bit go down to ICMP and we'll see source IP destination IP so let's log into our HQ router and let's delve right into it so the first one we'll do is a pool so to do a pool we need to do an access list one to identify the traffic that's coming in to be translated and we're doing it out of VLAN 10 so we're permitting the 10 network then we need to set up our pool we'll call public and we'll give it some random range which is not part of our configured networks with a net mask of 255 so that's given us an address range of 226 to 228 and we now have to instigate the actual translation so inside source is our access list one and we're going to use a pool of addresses defined under public so let's just expand this out so it's easier to see so we have an access list one permitting the 192.168.10.0 network we have a pool called public which has three addresses 226 227 and 228 so and we have the translation which is IP NAT inside source access list one pool public so we now need to go to the interfaces and, and define which one is inside and which one is outside so IP NAT inside so traffic coming from our LAN going to interface on the outside which is 001 IP net outside so if we go and hit our up arrow we'll see traffic going through hit our sniffer scroll down to the latest ICMP traffic and flag up see that it's 209.226 and it's 110 and just to show you this is network 20 so it's VLAN 20 
and I'll ping the same address 192 168 110 10 made a decimal point there boom it's through and scroll down here's our ICMP and you see that it's not being translated so the source IP is the same so only the traffic from the 10 network is being translated and if we do a show IP NAT translations we don't have any because it's timed out so we just hit the up arrow come back in and there we have our translations so you can see it's protocols ICMP it's translating to the first address in our pool from the 192.168.10.10 so translation is working so if we modify this for step number two so we're going to go no access list one and I'm going to redefine the access list as permitting the entire 192.168 range and I'm going to overload well before I overload it let's see what happens so if I ping from there and ping from there and jump in here and show the translations so you can see here we have 226 and then it's gone and grab the next IP address to do the translation between the 10 and the 20 and if we continue the trend come in here and configure the 30 network and it's all right so if we go ping 192.168.110.10 and step it up between all of them so we have create multiple pings happening and then have a look at our translations you'll see 226 227 228 so it's using the entire pool and if we configure the next one in the chain which is 40.10 and then do the same thing we do a ping and we're going to the same address that's not happening because we no longer have any pools all right so If we jump in and look at our translations we have the 40 there the rest have timed out so you saw the delay while it holds the addresses so if we go through and 
do all this again. So you see number three is timed out. So the third is locked down of the equation. And if we do the lock C again, you'll see 26, 27, 28 in use. But this time it's in VLAN 10, 20 and 40. So you can only have the maximum simultaneous connections for the IPs you have in your pool. We have three addresses in our pool. That's the maximum number of translations we can have. Any other traffic has to wait for the pool to reset itself and then it can make use of it. How can we change that? Well, we can change our config for our IP NAT to inside the source will still be list one and our pool is still going to be public but we're going to overload the connection so this time if we come in and jump through and do our four addresses, the fourth one should work because we're overloading our address. So if we look at the translations there we now can see that it's all using the same address but we have our 10, our 20, our 30, our 40s all being translated but each of them is using a unique port address between the inside local and inside global so we can see that it's overloading a single address but it's changing the port numbers okay there's a thousand twenty four there's nine next one's ten it's taking the next number thousand twenty five so you can see it in action there so that's the difference between straight NAT, where it can only translate an IP address to an IP address. And if we're using a pool of addresses, we can translate simultaneously to use the total number of addresses in the pool. If we add overload to the equation, we can overload it and it'll do the port address translation. And that's really all it is. So if we come in to our little sniffer again, scroll back up until we find the ICMP traffic. You'll see it's using the same port number. And then you'll see the sequence number changes. So that's sequence 126. We open the next one. Same source IP address, but the source sequence number is 127. So, there we have it. That is network address translation. Relatively short one. 
it's not much into it so we use an access list to identify the traffic we want to translate we can use a pool and address to translate it to or we can specify the interface so the way you would do it if you weren't defining a pool would be if we okay there's our pool overload so instead if we step back to here and do a question mark we could specify the interface so we could go interface g0001 which is our outside interface okay and do that one and what that tells it is to use the IP address on the interface of G001 to do the overloading on. So if we go through and do our ping sequence, between all of our ones and then come back here and show IP NAT translations expand it out you'll see that it's using our interface IP address for the global and it's just overloading the ports again so very powerful command very easy to configure and we've just run through multiple options all within side 20 minutes hope you've enjoyed it so let's just have a look at our configuration so here we have inside and our outside listed on our interfaces our pool statement if we're using the pool our NAT engine source and our access list identifying the traffic to translate hope you've found this informative and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.